This video is sponsored by World of Warships. For more on that, later. Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver. I'm joined by you. I never know if you're going to say I'm joined by Kira or if I have to just say my own name like a Pokemon. Say your own name. It's Kira. Yeah, I'm joined by Kira. And today we have got a box set for you, a brand new one. It is Legions Imperialis, Epic Battles in the Age of Darkness, Warhammer the Horus Heresy, Epic Scale. Epic twice. Say epic that again. Scale. Le Legions and Warhammer, the Horus Heresy, Legions Imperialis, Epic Battles in the Age of Darkness, Epic Scale. Warhammer. Very good. Box set. Um, epic Scale, so they're going to be massive. No, they're the opposite. They're opposite Epic Scale, they're tiny. Teeny tiny, teeny tiny Space Marines. With teeny tiny humans too. How do you feel? I... Immediately. I, I mean, it's... I don't know. It's taken... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's taken something that I'm not a huge fan of and made it more difficult. By making it smaller. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's four Space Marines to one normal Space Marine now. Yeah, I just don't know what to expect. Maybe they'll be like really cute little chibi style Space <laughs> Marines. Chibi, chibi, assault Marine, chibi, chibi Yeah, chibi with slightly marines. enlarged heads. It may be. Well, what we'll do is we'll crack open the box, we'll show you guys, I'll get everything assembled, and we'll rendezvous back when we've decided what's going on. Yes, the wait is over. The latest version of Epic 40k is finally here. The launch of Legions Imperialis is a little special, as it's the first time Games Workshop has ventured into a full battle experience on an epic scale in over two decades. Personally, my introduction to Epic was Titan Legion back in 1994, so I'm eager to get stuck in and check this one out. Featuring a whole host of new models based on the current Horus Heresy range, this set includes a total of 223 miniatures, albeit very tiny ones. You've also got transfers, books, tokens, dice, and whippy sticks. Oh, and a couple of cheeky little titans. But before we get carried away with little tanks and tiny spacemen, let's shift our focus to this video sponsor, World of Warships. It is the ultimate naval combat game that thrusts you into the helm of history's most iconic ships. With fresh content released monthly, featuring collaborations with iconic franchises such as Godzilla vs Kong, Transformers and more, there is always something new to discover. And from November the 16th to November 30th, World of Warships is partnering with the popular high school fleet anime series for an in-game event. Boasting over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather, World of Warships brings the seas to life. Select your vessel wisely though, as this game offers a diverse array of ship classes, from mighty battleships to nimble destroyers. Did I mention that the game is free to play and also available on consoles? Well, now you can command the seas on both PC and your favorite gaming devices. Ready for action? Download World of Warships now using the link in the description below. And here's the bonus. When you register, apply the promo code HSF2023 for an incredible starter pack, including 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, seven days of premium account time, and two high school fleet commanders. So what are you waiting for? Download using the link in the description, apply the promo code HSF2023, and revel in the Epic Awards. With that, let's get back to the tiny tanks. All right, so we've moved into the assembly phase of this hobby project, and whilst I don't want to bore you with too many details, there are a few things to note. Firstly, these are mostly One Piece models, which is great because it means there's not a ton of bold lines to fuss over. Certainly a big win there. And also, the Marines are usually attached to the undersides of the bases, so with just a few snips here and there, they clean up pretty nicely. Checking them out up close, I noticed some spots where details kind of blend together, creating these detailed black holes, like like little areas of nothing. So that is something you need to consider when painting them. Onto the Titans, not exactly new, they're from Adeptus Titanicus, but this is the first go at assembling one that I've had, and I think it's turning out pretty neat. They're like mini Titans, even though the actual model isn't actually that small. After putting a decent number of these bits together, I've come to the conclusion that keeping them on the sprue might be the way to go for painting. Gluing down the command squad made me realize reaching the details will be tricky and sorting out the base will probably be a bit of a hassle. But with the whole box put together, it's time to figure out our game plan for these models. Exciting times indeed. You put n nothing together again. I don't like it. You never assemble. No, my nails are too long when they're this tiny as well. I, I did do one thing though for you. It's that I assembled and glued down all the commanders onto one of the little bases and then realized it's probably a terrible idea. So as punishment, you're going to paint those ones. Punishment for what? For, for not assembling any of them. Oh. So there'll be... That's fair. I, I, thought, I figured halfway through that like it's probably best to paint them on the sprue. Yes, we'll be painting them on the sprue. Bar the one that I left off the sprue and glued together. And it's the command squad, so it's really awkward. Um, so you've got that. What legion are you thinking? I'm going to do Emperor's Children because purple. No reasons, because. 
Yeah, I don't prefer any one space brain man group man color <laughs> group band. Um, okay, well you've got it for children. I'm going to go ultramarines then and do goodies. And I think the main reason is because I've painted loads of ultramarines lately, and I want to see how like an ultramarine spray can with a wash works. Yeah, old old school. And I'm going to be contrast painting mine because it just seems to make sense. There's a lot of detail on them because they're so teeny weeny, um, and then I don't have to be careful. You can just go slap it on like that. Slap it on. That's my technique. That will probably do the job. I think it's going to work. We decided to focus our attention on painting the Space Marines, so we split them into two halves and gave the three Predators to the Ultramarines. They are a classic, will look beautiful in blue, and they kind of reminded me of the video game Final Liberation. Remember that one? Anyway, armed with McCrag Blue Spray, I applied an even coat after ensuring the can was well heated and shaken. A word of caution for those using spray cans, it's advisable to carry out this step outdoors in a well-ventilated area, preferably wearing a mask for safety. Next, I wanted to introduce some highlights, and was interested to see just how effective an airbrush is at this scale. While it may prove worthwhile for those using inks or oils, personally, I'd skip it if an all-over wash is the plan. I think because the models are so small, it's quite hard to get that high contrast finish, and although it does have an effect on the general colour, I don't know, have a play and let me know how you get on. Happy with progress so far, I mean it's only taken me 10 minutes, it's time to crack out a wash. I wanted to keep this thin to make sure I didn't wipe out any of the previous steps. The Contemptor and the Marines ended up looking great at this point, especially for so little work. Just make sure you manipulate it into the right places, don't let it pool and you're good to go. After that, it's just moving on to details. I'm going to make sure I black out all of the areas I want to paint other colours, if they're darker. This I think will help me decide just how much detail I want to put into these models. I'm beginning to get the feeling less is more, and this is just blues and blacks and already they're looking pretty good, or well, I think so, and I'm really happy with the work so far. Just make sure you take your time, keep it sharp, and don't overdo it. Hello, it's me, the disembodied voice of Kira. I'm going to talk you through how I painted my half of these little teeny tiny men in tanks. So all I used to them for me because I wanted to use contrast paint and I just really, really think these things were made for contrast paint and I'm about to prove my point. <laughs> you can just slap it on and the contrast paint does its job. We went for Luxian purple uh, for these Emperor's children and I am just taking absolutely no care here because you don't need to. Thanks contrast paint. Here they are with it all settled. I do end up having to go back and jab little bits into bits I missed, so maybe my slap it on method wasn't the actual best, but I'm really happy with the finish. Painting on sprue was a new experience for me. It goes against everything I believe in, but <laughs> I think for this, you actually do have to do it. And here I am trying to paint a tiny little microscopic head. Uh, that was quite difficult. And now I feel like I need to book an eye test because I found it really hard to see. Picking out the detail in these is really, really difficult. So just don't do it. That's my advice. There's absolutely no need to pick out teeny tiny little details. I enjoyed painting the tanks a little bit more, I guess, because they're that little bit bigger. Um, but as you can see, when I'm blocking in the white panels, it's kind of shifting all over the place because these things weigh absolutely nothing. So it might be easier to maybe blue tack these down to a base. Um, here I am pinning it in place so it can't run away anymore. <laughs> I'm blocking in some more of those details. Blocking in colours is kind of your detail work on these really anyway, um, because they're so tiny. But here it is, you, oh, dang, that camera really picks up every bit I miss. I swear I went back and repainted those gaps. <laughs> now we've seen Kira cracking on with those Empress children. I've also been doing a cheeky bit of work on these Ultramarines in the background. I've added some silvers, some reds, golds, whites, metals, all the colours I could think to add on to these. And yeah, I think they're looking pretty good. I'd say that was two relatively large sessions to get them up to this point. Definitely less is more. Add in the details you think you want to see, anything that breaks apart any of the flat colors you've got and kind of leave it there. I'm not worried too much about little rivets. I'm not bolt counting anything. I just want to make them look cool. And hopefully when I get them all together on a nice unified base, they'll do the job. All right, we're going to level it up now. We're going to put some silvers and some golds and make this a little bit more eye-catching. At this point, I've gone cross-eyed because these things are so tiny. I don't think painting teeny, weeny, teeny, tiny, tiny spacemen is for me. I'll stick to my normal, regular size tiny spacemen. But I'm happy with how this is turning out. And I've come to realize that you don't need to do a whole lot with these for them to look good. Um, once they're all down together, 
it's, it's really hard to see a lot of those tiny details. In fact, if you do zoom in on some of these details, you'll realize that they aren't even details. Some of the, some of the details blend together, like you'll get a little bit of a, a plume that just blends into their back, um, which is fair enough because they are tiny. Moving on to the basing, I thought I'd keep this simple and just use some grey spray. So I used Mechanica Standard Grey, a lighter grey, and then an even lighter grey, just to keep it simple and add a bit of texture. Do be aware that when you're gluing these down, you need to leave space for all five models. Dry fitting them to a degree is probably advantageous because once you've got that polystyrene cement down, it's hard to jig them about. Then it's the very final step, the victory lap the black base rim. This helps separate the models from the board and then you are good to go. And with that, that is the video. What do you think to the finished product? Personally, I came into this a little apprehensive. I wasn't too keen on Epic models, but having spent a few days painting them, I have to say I am converted. I am a convert. I absolutely love them. I don't know why. There's just something really satisfying about painting tons of little models, sticking them all on little bases and moving them all around a board. Now, I haven't yet played, and I'm actually quite looking forward to getting some games in. I'm not sure how Akira feels about it. You probably heard back there that, you know, it's cool, it's something fun to do, but maybe not her thing. And maybe that's the case for some of you out there. Maybe this just isn't your thing, and that is totally okay. If you have any interest, do make sure to check out all the links down in the description. There are links there to my Patreon and to the Broadsword Wargaming shop based over in the EU. We sell all of your hobby supplies, including Cough Cough this game. So if you want to pick up these models in the, in the EU, check out that link down there. But other than that, I think we're about there. Thank you all of you for your support. Thank you for watching. Take care and I will catch you in the next one.